Hey everyone, it's Rob here and we have some big updates on the earthquakes and possible eruption in Iceland. I feel like I say that every day, but you know what? Every day it gets crazier and more earthquakes. So I think we're just going to kick off with the last, you know, 12 hours here in Iceland have been quite intense. You can see here it's all over the news, but the big news is that there were eight quakes with a magnitude of over three uh, since around midnight. And we can just take a look at the charts. I mean, we always do. This is the earthquake charts. You can see how many of these green stars there are, which indicate a magnitude over three. And then all of these dots concentrated in this region that's close to the Reykjanes Peninsula and close to Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. If we dive into the table, we can see, just go to everything over three, we can see that there are a lot of these. We can see 7 a.m., 6, 6, 6, 6. You know, there's like a whole bunch of them that are all happening around Krusevik, Fagrasvet, Kerlit, all of these magnitudes of over three. There have been a ton of these, as you can see just on the chart. Now, we are looking at some of them that were quite a bit bigger. We can see that there was a 4.7 at 11.30 last night. And that was at a depth of 1.1 kilometers. So it's really, really shallow. And then there was a 4.8 <laughs> just around the same time in uh, Krusevik. And that was a depth of one kilometer. So really quite intense shakes. And I had saw all of my friends were messaging me. Tons of stuff going on, on Facebook and people posting a lot. Shortly after that at night, of course, we have a lot of these magnitude threes. But then we get a 3.7. And then a 5.0 at 2.30 last night. And then shortly after that, 4.5. Uh, actually, just now there was just another small quake that I felt. So this is definitely occurring more and more frequently. Whether that leads to an eruption, we are not 100% sure. But let's take a look at some of the other information that we have coming out of Iceland and all the news lately. So now we have a picture here which is showing the so-called deformation that has been accompanying all of those earthquakes and crack movements. And when the magma is settling in the Earth's crust, it's making its way and pushes the rocks to the side and creates deformation that can be you know, quite a few centimeters, said one of the professors of geophysics at King Abdullah University of Technology in Saudi Arabia. Now this image, which is published by, I hope I can say this, Adrino Nobal, a research scientist at that university, shows the deformation in Iceland, in the Reykjanes Peninsula, from July 20th until 7 p.m. last night, or before, you know, that crazy amount of shaking and earthquakes that actually occurred last night. Now, the effects of the earthquakes at Klevervat, those big ones that I just mentioned, those are not visible here, but you can see in this picture, there are two large signs. So there's the larger one towards the right, uh, is due to the tunnel indentation itself, while the other shows the exact location of Sunday night's quake, the largest quake of this series so far, which was a magnitude of 5.5. Now, he does point out that the larger one is very close to the eruption centers themselves, but slightly northeast of the eruption centers towards Kelir. Now, he also goes on to say, uh, someone else, Sigrion, goes on to say that this is similar to what was happening in February and March before last year's eruption and a much stronger storm than there was in December, which did not lead to an eruption. As we know, uh, December kind of fizzled out. So this one here is mimicking what happened before the eruption. Now it's quite clearly showing a deformation due to all of this magma tunnels and things like that. So it's not news, but we can see exactly where it is now. And it fits in perfectly with the seismic activity that has been happening in the last few days due to this tunnel itself. Now, however, Sigurdjom does point out that all of these tunnels and the biggest earthquakes, they're not there, primarily taking place southwest of this tunnel near Grindavik. And as we saw in yesterday's post, Grindavik is getting quite the amount of earthquake tremors, sort of, I wouldn't say devastation, but there's definitely things falling off the shelves and, and things breaking because of the earthquakes, less so here in Reykjavik. But... Uh, all of this stuff closer to Klevavat, and that's why, you know, in Reykjavik, we can feel it a lot more because it's closer than many of the other earthquakes that have been uh, in the past. So definitely something to be uh, 
to be on the lookout for. Now, we do have some other news. This is the mayor of Grindavik, and what he was saying in his news, MBF, is it's very difficult for them to build fortifications and preparedness in the Reykjanes Peninsula. And one of the reasons that he's saying is it just costs so much money. Uh, in terms of what would be best, is it would be best if we can get, sort of get all of this preparedness done right away, but of course the cost of this, I believe he was saying it was one to two billion Icelandic kroner to actually make it happen. So we can see here that the road administration believes that one small dike costs between one to 1.5 billion Icelandic. So the budget would quickly run out if they went on and started making that. Now, other news, because of all of the earthquakes, the el electricity went out after one of the earthquakes last night in an aluminum smelter. And of course, it's affecting a lot of stuff. But um, one thing that's for sure is I think we're going to continuously see some of these disruptions in infrastructure as these quakes continue. Moving on to even more, we have some, someone here uh, coming in. So it's, uh, I believe, it's Gunnar Mar Gunnarsson. He said is the, it would be best if the eruption started as soon as possible so that the pressure is relieved, get rid of these constant earthquakes. And he's a resident of Grindavik, so I 100% get where he's coming from with, uh, you know, wanting to, to stop feeling these earthquakes all day and, as I mentioned, all night as well. Now, a knowledgeable person did tell him that an eruption could be expected in August. And if we jump over to some of the news here, we can see that, I mean, maybe that's something that's going to happen. I mean, it's August now. I don't think it's too far-fetched that if these earthquakes continue at the magnitude that they are, that um, August, you know, there's a lot of days in August left. It would have been, uh, if there was a couple days days ago and they said it's going to happen in July, I would say, okay, maybe I'm not a betting man on that. But there is a lot left in August for us to you know, actually see an eruption. So I think uh, it's definitely something that is very, very likely. And in a lot of the news, they're saying that more likely than not, as this continues, it will lead to an eruption. Now, Gunnar here says that in his immediate environment, again, people in Grindavik, um, a few people are directly afraid of it, but it's natural that people you know, think about this and they sort of learn to live with this in Grindavik. So it's definitely a lot of earthquakes in their time. Um, and it's been a learning process for not only the people in Grindavik and around that area, but the people of Reykjavik. Usually these earthquakes and eruptions uh, are typically outside of the Reykjavik area, but here we go. And we see the upheaval on the Reykjavik Peninsula began early in 2020. And some people are saying that this could be a longer period of time before we uh, see any sort of stop. Now, moving on to the last little bit of news that I wanted to sort of cover today is this interview with a volcanologist, volcanologist, says that it would make sense to build another international airport away from Keflavik Airport because he's saying it could happen that a volcano or volcanic eruption could take away both roads that lead to the airport. Uh, and his name is Thorvaldur. Thorson is a volcan, vulcan, volcanologist, uh, and he was a guest on one of the radio shows this morning, and he discussed that the earthquakes over the last few days means that it's more likely that there's going to be an eruption. And he says, of course, that they felt well in the capital area, people are waking up, and uh, especially in Fagnesfat, so that's where the eruption previously took place. He said, the weakness aims directly at the metropolitan area. The seismic waves sometimes accompany these weaknesses, and we feel a lot of these surface waves. And if it's deeper, the further away people, they'll experience the other waves first. Now, he is saying, though, however, it is unlikely that houses will collapse because it is known abroad in, in different parts of the world where there's an earthquake and buildings are destroyed. But it's unlikely to happen in Iceland because I think it would, well, he's suggesting that it would require a very large earthquake for that sort of infrastructure damage to actually happen. So it's uh, only time we'll see, we'll, we'll be able to tell, but there's been a lot to cover, huge amount of earthquakes that have been over a magnitude of three, going up to five, and uh, I think we are going to see some sort of 
climax to all this with an eruption in the near future. So that is a long video. There's a lot to cover. I was up with earthquakes all night. So I hope you enjoyed this news. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.